Hello and welcome to this AIX in Focus series video. We've now got to the topic of advanced O tuning commands. You're probably wondering, what does that mean? Well, I'll explain in a second. I'm Nigel Griffiths. I work at IBM Power Advanced Technology Support in Europe. In these series, we're not covering the basic uh, AIX or Unix or Linux level commands. They're much the same across those. Although that last one on the left there, look, change file system size reduce the root file system of one gig and takes a second it's done some of those operating systems list at the top can't do that one but you can definitely do that with AIX and you have been able to for what 20 years or something so we have a set of commands that have a consistent interface to hundreds of AIX advanced performance tuning options they have a common syntax across these commands common output which is very nice and they use common terms across the commands. So here they are, the seven commands. Notice they're called the O commands because they all end in an O. Now the big ones, if you like, are IOO, which is for input and output, NO for networks, SCHEDULE, which is the CPU scheduler inside AIX, and VMO is looking at the virtual memory manager control via these commands. There's a little one in the middle there, number five, which is Razo, which is quite a nice command, doesn't it? Sounds like a girl's name or something. But uh, that's reliability, availability, and serviceability. Three of the big points in AIX that make it far superior to other Unix or Unix-like operating systems. Now, some of these commands I found, which was a little bit of a surprise to me, is that some of them you need to be the root user to execute them, even if you're just listing out what the options are set to some of them will let you use the minus l option to have a look at the settings as a regular user so if in doubt just go to super user to run these commands now when you use that minus l option to get a list of all the current settings you get a, like a table view of it and across the top you have these various headings well, there's the name of the tuning option that helps the cur, the current value, tells what it's actually set to now, and the default value. That's nice because you can then tell if somebody's changed it from the regular value that perhaps it should be. Then the boot tells you if you rebooted the system, would this get switched off or has it been made permanent so that it survives a reboots? The minimum and maximum are useful for you to work out what's a good value for these various tuning options. And then we have units there on the next page. There's quite a few of them, all sorts of things in here, bytes or a numeric value um, or seconds or something are typical, but there's all sorts of different uh, things in here. So you need to go and check um, for particular options, what they're actually counted in. Then there is the type. So it could be static that you can't change it. It's there for informational purposes. Then it's dynamic that you can change those actually live with the AIX uh, running. Uh, a B means you have to run a boss boot operation, get that into the boot image, and then you'll have to reboot to activate it. An R means you just have to restart the AIX, reboot it to get that effective. Uh, C only affects future socket connections. Uh, not, not the current ones, so that's not going to sort of log you out of services you connected to, but the next time you log into them, then uh, AX will get the new values. Then we got things for future mountings of, for example, file systems. Got some that are uh, incremental, they can only be incremented. And if little d means it's deprecated, it's there for information. Maybe it was used in the previous versions of AX, so it's just uh, there for you to let you see it, but you can't actually change it. Also, when it says OK for kilo or megabytes or gigabytes, then these are the actual values that it's uh, representing in here. Uh, it's important for like disks, the, the megabytes don't actually refer to. Uh, mega, they're millions, aren't they? So these are the definitions being used in these commands. They're the computer ones rather than the marketing numbers. And NA means the parameter is not supported by the current platform or kernel. Perhaps you're running on AIX on a particular machine that doesn't have the feature that you could tune with the command option. I did a quick check and uh, ran the commands to find out how many options are in each of these. The big one there you can see is the NO, the network options. Um, then VMO, the virtual memory manager options. Uh, and then IOO for the uh, storage 
or IO operations. So how many of those in practice if we add them all up? Well, I got my computer to do that for me. And the answer is 299, that's quite a lot. Shame they couldn't add just one more to make it 300. But there's a whole bunch of options that aren't normally shown to you. You have to put extra parameters in the commands to actually see them. These are known as the restricted settings. If we switch those on and have a look at them, we're now boosted up to 531 with restricted options. And this changes from release to release. I looked at the latest one when I made this video, which is AX72 TL4 SP2. So what are these restricted options about? Well, AX comes out of the box, you know, just as you install it, do a normal install, with pretty good settings for all the tuning options. We've worked quite hard, particularly with AX 7.2, so that you get a first good experience with AIX for the vast bulk of your applications and workloads. Now, in some cases, of course, we may find that you have an unusual combination and we need to make some slight tuning adjustments to allow that or you're going for high very high speed io or you want very high numbers of cpus and those sorts of things so if you use the minus f option you get to see them these should not be set unless you've been told to by ax support you've raised a performance support case with them a pmr as we used to call it and then they say we think you should set this command for your particular complex workload if you raise a support case and you've been fiddling with these without them telling you to then you could be asked to switch them all off because ARX support are not there to debug your silly fiddling about with advanced settings. It's like going to the vendor of your car and saying, oh, I've made lots and lots of changes to the carburetor, but it's not running very well. You'll have to fix it under warranty. And the answer is no, I don't think so. Now, you may not have a copy of AX available to you. You, know, you can't log in and uh, have a look. This is the um, output of an example in here, the NO minus H command. They're all the same in, in the same variables. They have the same command structure. So they all look the same apart from the name of the command at the top. So the H and a tunable will actually display information, quite a lot of information about that particular tunable. If you do the L, you've got a list of all of them or one of them if you just name them uh, as would be a one liner. Uh, the X outputs that in comma separated values that could be useful if you're scripting. Then you use the minus O, the tunable name and the new setting if you want to set it. Then you'll be wanting to double check that you've got the right things in here. A minus D will actually set it back to the default which is a nice quick way of getting things out. Um, the R and the P is important. The R will do it at the next reboot. The P will make it permanent so it'll do it currently and at the next reboot. So a couple of little examples in here, the VMO minus L will give you out that those list of all those values. Or you could look for one particular one in this case. Um, if you want to set something, Sketch O, this is a famous one to, to change the uh, VPM throughput mode equals two, as an example. I'm not recommending that to anybody, but it's just an example of actually setting it. The minus P here does it current and permanent. So if you reboot, it will stay set that way. Here's a little example of the minus H option that gives you a lot more information about it and what it means. Next an example of what the minus L option looks like. We looked at these uh, columns over in here. This is a random selection. I think they're from two different commands in here. This is VMO and Schedule. We just looked at things that are good illustrations. In here we can see this is uh, not available. I presume this means that AME is not actually switched on. It require a boss boot and a reboot to switch that on if you make a change to it. The ones with Ds are dynamic so we can change these ones on the fly. Down in here we have the max free and min free. Well actually this is just the max free. This min free in here is because it's a dependency so the max free can't go below the min free. <laughs> I don't know what happens at that point. Um, it will just ignore your settings I guess. And we can see in here the minimum and maximum range and what it's currently set to. You can see something in here of the, the number of cores um, or the number of processors. This uh, VPM throughput mode can make your machine behave differently, even if it's got SMT8 switched on and the way it moves to the new uh, cores. 
Now, when you were upgrading the major releases, AX6171, 71, 72, you expect some of the tuning options to change. Actually, some may go missing and there may be new ones in here. So never apply the settings you had from the previous generation of AX to the new version as you updated it. Partly because some of them won't actually work, they say it doesn't exist, you can't say that. And partly because the outer box settings are different for better performance and, and now you're going away from what the AX developer test team has suggested are the best settings for most people. So be aware of this, and if necessary, if you think you should be changing something, uh, raise an AX support case, a PMR. Uh, that's what they're there for, that's what you pay support for to do. You think it should be going faster, and you're going to suggest a change to this, and they can recommend from looking at your machine, your perf PMR data, for example, and a snap, whether they think that's a good idea or not. I actually found it hard to remember some of the options and which commands they were actually in. So just a little shell script here that copies the man pages uh, from that takes the listing of all the options for each of the commands and puts them into one file and then I can search the file. I thought there was something, something, something repage. And when you go and look at, no, you can't find it. So that must have been one of the ones that went missing with the current version of AX that I'm operating on. Now you may have wondered why there's a little bit of a gap over in here. Well, there was a command that I thought was an O command, but it sort of is and sort of isn't. There's a LVM O command. It only has uh, nine options in here. And the syntax is, is very similar. There's a minus capital L and a minus O to tune it, but we don't have the some of the other exotic options. These are used to, it says at the bottom, set and show P buff tuning parameters. So I decided to take it off my prime list, but there's eight. Or is it seven and a half? Well, that's it for this video. I'm not going to go blow by blow through my top 20 tuning options and why I think you can set them. I don't want to encourage people to fiddle about. Best leave them as they are, unless you really think you can make an improvement and you have a test system, probably a full size test system to actually test out your ideas to make sure you're going to get a performance gain and a measurable performance gain is the important thing. If you like this video, learn something, then give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, then you get told when the, I release new videos, although I think there's another button you have to press as well to actually get an alert. Thank you for your time.